Joule's law. Ohm's law is V equals I times R. Joule's law is the law that relates power to electricity. You might want your blue sheet out in that I'm going to make a gentle hint along the way, but it's really up to you. It's also something you may pick up on your own. So recall, we said this, as charges flow through a circuit device, like a resistor, or often I'll just think of it as a light bulb, in that resistor, they're losing energy, and they're losing energy because they're colliding with atoms inside the wire inside the resistor. If you want me to be fussy, it's probably some type of kinetic energy. They're typically the easiest resistor, to, uh, the easiest energy transformation to do is into heat. I think I told you last day, your stove elements are a, co a controlled short circuit. That's the easiest way to bleed off the energy, but we're pretty clever. We can get the energy all sorts of different ways. So this energy is transformed, this energy loss is transformed into heat. And it must also be related to voltage drop because potential energy is QV. That's joules. So we can find an expression for the rate at which charges lose energy. Power loss. Power is energy loss over time. And energy loss is going to be QV over time. Why is that an energy loss? Remember I kept saying to you, you could think of voltage as height, and that QV is as though you're dropping an object and all of its potential mm -hmm. turns into kinetic. This is like the MGH of height. Then in brackets here I wrote grouping, not groping, Caleb, grouping. Grouping, right here. Okay. If you do this, and you group those two together, what's Q over T? current. And you get power equals IV, although we almost always write it as VI. And I think that's the second equation in this unit on your formula sheet. And we did the unit analysis before I hit record. We did the unit analysis from a graph, but it's going to be joules per coulomb times coulombs per second and we noticed that the coulombs canceled, and Nate looked at his formula sheet and said, that's a joule per second. Aha, he said, what did you say? <laughs> what? So this must be power. Okay. We're going to talk a lot more about this. So this is typically power lost going through a resistor. I don't think I'm ever going to ask you, how much power is the battery delivering? I'll say, we'll look at one specific resistor in a circuit. We'll say, how many watts of power is required for that thing to run? Or if we're talking about light bulbs, we'll calculate how much power. Power is directly related to brightness. A 100 watt bulb is brighter than a 60 watt bulb is brighter than a 50 watt bulb. My mom says I'm not the brightest bulb. Caleb, she means something to So our equation, Joule's law, is this. That goes in the box. That's the rate at which electrical energy is transformed into heat energy inside an appliance. That's a long way, a long way to say, and that's power loss. Also, though, we know that V equals I times R, so we can find two new versions. The first thing I can say is instead of writing V, I can write I times R and then times I. Lyndon, is that still V times I? Yeah. Except what's a better way to write I, I? Now, this year, I gave you that one on your formula sheet. I never have in the past. On your blue sheet, underline or put a star or a box, that's the one we're going to use the most by far. Just because the method that I'll be teaching you to use to solve circuits, usually you'll know the resistance and the current before you know anything else anyhow. Now the other thing that I could do is I could get the I by itself in Ohm's Law. And so I guess I could also write this as 
power equals V times I, but instead of writing I, I can write V over R. Power equals V, V over R. Lyndon, what's a better way to write V, V? And so that's why there's that third v version. Got to be honest. I can't recall the last time I had to use that. It's, it's so redundant. All of When I'm solving circuits, all of my energy is going into finding current and voltage and resistance as an afterthought. And by then, once I have current and voltage, I'll either go V times I or I squared R and zip zap. This is the one that I use the most. Um, little technical comment. In finding the energy lost by the charges, I really should use the work energy theorem, which is change in potential plus change in kinetic. However, aside from right when you turn the switch on and right when you turn the switch off, the charges are not speeding up or slowing down. So, what can you tell me about their change in kinetic? Okay? By the way, this also explains why, especially if you're running a heavy appliance, right when you flick it on, everything dims for a little bit and then comes back up because we do need to bleed some extra energy to give the charges that kinetic energy in the first place. Okay? And you may even notice sometimes right when you flick something, flick things off, the lights briefly go brighter for a split because there's more energy back in the system. But we're not gonna we're gonna pretend that doesn't happen. We're gonna keep our math nice. So we can say that. And then it's just gonna be the change in potential, which we said was QV, and from that I was able to derive power. Okay. So let's talk about some appliances. Example three says, find the current in your house wires if you plug in a 1400 watt hair dryer. Okay. What's this question asking me to find? You know what? Since we're beginning a brand new unit with new concepts, let's fall back on our physics 11 DFIC method. I'm going to write down I equals question mark until I get good. And you'll notice I've moved away from that as we've gotten better and better at solving, but it's still one of my go-tos. In fact, a lot of you in the last couple of days when you've been asking me for help on the, electro, uh, on the uh, electrostatics, I've said to you, why don't you dulp? I'm not going to help you until you draw a picture. Here, I got the picture. I'm going to list my data. What is my data? What else do I know, Braden? You know, the watt, wattage. What is the power use? 1,400. What else do I know? What's the voltage? Now, this is alternating current. We'll look at that a tiny bit. The problem with alternating current is it does that. Um, do you guys know what that's a graph of yet or not? Who's in pre-calc 12? You haven't done trig yet, have you? No. See, and that, that's why I can't. It, once you've done trig, you would have glanced and you would have said, Mr. Duke, that's a sine or a cosine wave. And yes, it is, absolutely. But because I can't assume you've seen that, I really don't do much with alternating current. But I will say, if any of you get into electronics, everything that I'm teaching you with direct current applies over to alternating current as well. Braden, what else do I know? Oh, you said, already said 120? Yeah. Is there an equation that has an I, a P, and a V in it? Uh, get the I by itself. Times? No, sorry. Okay. Power equals V times I? Yes? So how would I get the I by itself? Divide by V? Divide. What do you get? What'd you get? 11.7? Units for current? Amps? Now, just under nerd trivia, I know that household circuits, with a couple of exceptions, we'll talk about those later, can only handle 15 amps before they blow the breaker. Could you run two hair dryers from this outlet? Nope. And now you know how it's possible to blow a breaker. If you blow a breaker in a home, it's because you were setting up some kind of a system that required more than 15 amps. 
you have a couple of 30 amp circuits in your house. We'll talk about what those are in a couple of seconds here. Since I've introduced electrical power to you, I always like to try and give you an idea of what's really big and what's really small. So what I have here on the left are a number of appliances. On the right, I have a number of approximate power uses. Here's what uses more power if it's an appliance. The more heat it's moving around, the more power it has to use. So from these appliances here, which of these do you think uses the most power? And I'm going to give you a hint. It actually requires a special power outlet. It can't plug in and run off of a 120 volt outlet. If you pull it off of the wall, you'll see it's got a really funky plug behind it. Caleb, what's the biggest wattage on the right hand side? So a clothes dryer pulls about 5,000 watts. Ish. Oh, and that circuit that has the special 220 volt outlet, that's one of the ones that can handle 30 amps. It's a special circuit. Uh, you Also, behind your stove, if you pull your stove off, if it's not a gas stove, your oven typically requires a 220 volt connection as well. Those are, as far as I know, the two. The third one that's just starting to occur, uh, garages that have electric cars. So my friend bought a Chevy Bolt and they had to install a 220 watt outlet 220 volt outlet in their garage because it cuts the charging time in half. It's well worth doing, even though it's about four thousand dollars. You'll thank yourself a few years in if you don't do it. Okay. Um, which of these do you think moves the next most amount of heat around? It's a hot water heater, and that is because water can absorb a tremendous amount of heat energy in joules. The fancy phrase is it has a high specific heat capacity. Water can really absorb a lot of heat. It takes a lot of energy to heat up water. What's the next biggest wattage? We're going to flip in the other direction. Which appliance generates so little heat, uses so little power, that can run off a battery for about a year? Yeah, um, we're talking about like the little wall clocks behind me. Those can run off a double A. You'll get a good year off of that. They generate almost no heat. So uh, 0.1 watts. Oh, the second one. What's the wattage of an average light bulb? I'll make the assumption that you've replaced a bulb. Lena? 60 watts. Of the three remaining, what do you think uses the least amount of power? Fan. Yeah, because you don't want the kitchen fan to throw off a bunch of heat because that defeats the purpose of using the kitchen fan. So a typical electric motor kitchen fan, about 150 watts. And again, there's wide variation. I have a fan that run off a USB. I think that one's only pulling about 12 watts, but it's not a big fan. Okay. We have a computer. We have a large microwave. What's the wattage of a large microwave? By the way, this is also why whenever you look at the instructions and it's telling you how to microwave something, small microwaves and large microwaves have a different wattage, and so it will always say microwave oven times may vary. vary. That's why it says that. They don't know how big your Because a larger microwave can pour more energy per second, which means less time required to cook it. Smaller microwave doesn't put in as much wattage, as much energy per second, take more time. Large microwave? About 1,200, yeah. Larger microwaves are over 1,000 watts. Computer, and this is a basic computer. This is not a high-end gaming machine. Those use much more power, about 800 watts. Well, they do and they don't. Like a standard desktop only actually needs a small fan to cool it off. You're not moving as much heat as you think. Massive gaming machines, in fact, you can buy liquid-cooled ones and go full out. Sure, those are probably closer to 2,000 watts, I suspect. I'm not going to test or assess you on any of this, although on the provincial, they used to often, as a multiple-choice question, list four appliances, and they would simply say which one of these would have the height require the most power or the least power. And it'll be pretty obvious, and it's always either if it was the most power, the one that would use the most heat, 
or the leaf power, the one that would draw the least heat. So that also allows us to get electrical energy. Since power is energy divided by time, it's work over time, energy over time, I guess the amount of electrical energy is going to be power times time. This would give us an answer in joules. The problem is a joule is a very small unit of energy. If you have me for science nine, we actually calculated uh, how many joules of energy would be used leaving a light bulb on for eight hours. And it was like several, I think it was about 30 million joules of energy. And if your parents got their electrical bill and it had billions of joules of energy on it, people would freak. And also they just don't know how to process such large numbers. Remember last year in grade 11, I showed you that mega penny project where we saw bigger and bigger numbers in terms of pennies. And even that is still tough to wrap my brain around. So although the SI standard unit for energy is joules, once you start paying your own electric bill, which is not that far away from most of you, you'll learn that BC Hydro gives you your electrical energy bill. And they charge you for energy, not for power, for energy in kilowatt hours. A kilowatt hour. A kilowatt power. Hour. No, what do I measure? What does hours measure? So this is, it is still a unit of energy. Like the units match, it's not my preferred, it's not going to give you an answer in joules, but that power times time is definitely an energy measure. Uh, one kilowatt hour is 1,000 watts for 3,600 seconds. It's 3.6 times 10 to the 6 joules. Typical household uses about 1,000 to 3,000 kilowatt hours per month. So, example A. Suppose a 60-watt bulb is left on all month, and let's make it a month that's 30 days long, not 31, not 28, and we'll go 24 hours per day. Okay. By the way, you've learned the dumb trick for remembering which days have, which months have 31 and which months have 30 days. Pardon me? Put your hands like this. January 31. What comes after January? The knuckle doesn't have 31. What comes after... February. March has 31. April does not. May has 31. June does not. July has 31. Oh, ran out of knuckles. Move to the other hand. August has 31. September does not. October has 31. November does not. Everybody? Has 31. December has 31. Hashtag nerd trivia. I just blew my ears. My, oh, have you seen the nine times table on the fingers, right? Yeah. Okay. No. Spencer, what does A want me to find? <laughs> well, in this case, with power and time, I'm going to say energy is power times time. I guess the power is going to be a 60-watt bulb. Time is going to be 30 days times 24 hours times 3,600 seconds per hour. If we leave a light bulb on all month, 24-7, how many joules of energy will that be? Do you get one, three, fives, a two, and four zeros? Yeah. I'm going to write out the whole thing because I'm going to use this. One, three fives, a two, and four zeros, and that would be in joules. And if I now add the commas, yeah, 155 million joules of energy. Now that sounds like a lot. Let's convert it to kilowatt hours because this is how it would appear on your electrical bill. Matt, what did I say? What's one kilowatt hour the same as? What am I going to do with those two numbers? Say, I don't know. And I, I'm okay with that. You had me for physics last... Matt, you had me for physics last year? Yeah. Remember when we did unit conversion? What was the first thing that I always did when I didn't know what to do? I wrote down what they gave me. 
I'm going to write down one, three fives, a two, and four zeros. One, three fives, a two, and four zeros. And Matt, more importantly, I'm going to write the units, joules. I want to get rid of joules. So where am I going to want joules in the next fraction? And I guess I'm going to want kilowatt hours on the top. So this is, by the way, I don't know either. I've never bothered wasting my brain memorizing this. I derive it every time using the unit analysis tricks I taught you last year. You told me that uh, one kilowatt hour is 3.6 times 10 to the 6 joules. Where is that 3.6 times 10 to the 6? On the? Which means mathematically I'm going to? Why waste my brain memorizing dividing or timesing or adding? There, I figured it out in one second. In fact, I can do it far faster than me telling you it's a little scribble on a margin somewhere, zip zap. So uh, this number divided by 3.6 times 10 to the sixth, and I get, uh, oh, 43.2 kilowatt hours, a much more reasonable number for non-math people to deal with. And then we're going to run into a problem. First of all, do me a favor. I needed to change these numbers. BC Hydro has raised their rates, so now they're about $0.08 cents per kilowatt hour. How much money will this cost? What will I do with that $0.08 cents and this 43.2? Multiply them? Yeah. What if I wasn't sure? I'd write down 43.2. I'd write down kilowatt hours. I want kilowatt hours to cancel. It would go on the bottom of the next fraction. I want dollars and cents to be on the top. And if you plug in the conversion factor, it'll tell you what to do. But for now, we are going to end up going 43.2 times 0 0.08. See, this is leaving a light bulb on for an entire month. That's a problem. We're too good at creating electricity for cheap because the financial incentive to switch something off, I mean, yeah, that adds up, but it's not like you're, wow, I'm rolling in the dough for this. <laughs> so why do we tell you to shut off lights? Not really for the money. Why is it for the environment? We're lucky here in BC. We don't have, I don't know if we have any coal plants. In fact, in BC, we have such a in our brain stamped on our consciousness method of generating electricity that I slipped several times. We don't call it the BC Electrical Company. What do we call it? It's hydroelectric. And that's just ingrained in our brain. In fact, I hear people use hydro as a synonym for electricity all the time. Now, once you build a dam, hydroelectricity is a pretty green way to generate electricity, but it was in building the dams at the time when we built all these dams, we didn't realize we really screwed up the salmon, salmon runs in the rivers. Also, because you're building a big lake behind the dam, it's a man-made artificial lake, it means you're flooding a whole bunch of trees and land, and that carbon that was stored in the trees is now going to be eventually making its way back to the atmosphere. So... It, it's, we don't want to build more dams if we can help it. We certainly want to get away from coal plants. We certainly want to get away from fossil fuels if we can because it's a limited resource. And also, the other thing that we use petroleum products for, think about all the plastic products in our lives as Caleb is sipping from his drink bottle. We, plastic has become so ubiquitous. We could survive without fuel for cars. It would shock our economy, but you know what? Within about a decade, we could move our cars over to electrical with the grid. We could do that. We could not survive without plastic. Think about where you see plastic everywhere. That's what we need to really sa save our petroleum reserves for. So we need to find other ways to generate energy, whether it's nuclear, whether it's wind, whether it's geothermal, whether it's solar, all of those. So turn your lights off to save the Earth. Happy Earth Day. Is that Monday? I think Earth Day is Monday. Pardon me? Do vegans use electricity? I, you know what? It's funny you said that. I, I have breakfast every morning in a restaurant, and there's an old fellow there who helps run the restaurant, nice fellow, and he came to me today. And All those people protesting, Kinder Morgan, but they're driving their carts. Aren't they belittling the environment? First of all, I think there's local and then there's global 
ideas, and I think you do want to think globally. I think, I suspect, there's a higher percentage of vegans that cycle to work every day than there are non-vegans that cycle to work every day. I think I could probably safely say that, I suspect. So some of them do. But we're also at a point right now where I think what we're trying to say is, hey, planet, let's all of us make an effort to make this switch so that it's easier for all of us to make the switch without giving up our creature comforts. Like, I'll be honest, I'm not giving up my car. Ever. I don't think. I could, in theory bus and commute my way here. I live up by Garibaldi. I imagine I could probably make that work. I don't think I'm going to make that change, although I do know of some of my colleagues who bus here and bus home, and that's their commitment to the environment, and good for them. However, you know what? Let's maybe make it easier for me, and what I mean by that is cheaper for me, uh, for my next car to be electric. I'm in. And by cheaper, I don't mean even the same price as my current car. I don't mind if it's a bit more expensive, but I can't buy a Tesla right now for 120. Oh, the Model E for 35, uh, uh, maybe, or other stuff. That, that's what we want to push towards. That would be my answer. Nice. Efficiency. Recall that efficiency is the ratio of energy or power output to energy or power input. That's not how I taught it. I told you that it was always the smaller number divided by. And the reason I'm saying that this is the unit, this one here, there is a question coming in your future where the word out appears next to the power in just because of the grammar of the English sentence. And the word in appears next to the power out because of the grammar of the English sentence. And I've lost track of how many times kids try and tell me, oh, Mr. Dewitt, this light bulb is 140% efficient. No, it's not. You're not winning a Nobel Prize. I wish you were. That would solve a lot of our vegan issues that we were just talking about. Absolutely. So the symbol for efficiency we said was that it's power out over power in or it's energy out over energy in just don't go watts divided by joules the units have to match what did i say my dumb way to remember it's going to be the bigger number divided by no 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 mr do smaller number divided by the bigger number, and then if you want to make it a percentage, this will give you a decimal, times it by 100. So let's look at example six, and then I guess I've got to go on a rant. In short lesson. Uh, a 60-watt light bulb, standard bulb, is connected to 120 volts AC, standard outlet, Produces 58 joules of heat and light every second. It's left on for eight hours. Electricity costs six cents. Cross out the six cents. We're going to make it eight cents per kilowatt hour. Okay. Hmm. Eric, what's the first thing you want me to find? You know what? I'm going to go I equals question mark because there's a lot of data there. Right now, I can find current from Ohm's law, and I can find current from Joule's law. Which one am I going to use here, Eric? So that means they told you the resistance in Ohm's? Okay. So we're going to go current is the power divided by the voltage. How many watts is the bulb? 60. How many volts are we plugged into? 120. Eric, redeem yourself in your head exactly how many amps. Yep. Leaving 14.5 amps to power other devices in a pinch if you needed to. Sarah, what's B want me to find? And I wrote assume ohmic and, and because I'm teaching you the simple basic version of electricity, many resistors behave differently. As different currents go through them, their resistance actually changes. As they heat up or cool down, their resistance changes. Once again, that's all yucky math, Lena. We're going to pretend that doesn't exist. All of our resistors will follow Ohm's law. We say 
ohmic. Uh, so it wants me to find R. Help me out. How can I find R? Sarah, my angel. Which equation, first of all, can I use? Oh, except can you get the R by itself? You're using V equals I times R, get the R by itself. So see Ohm's law? Yeah, because yeah, I know voltage, right, is 120. And I just found the current running through this is 0.5 amps. Get the R by itself. R equals what over what? I think you're right. I can't hear you. Did you say V over I? Yeah. So it's going to be 120. Really, Manier? Dividing by 0.5, Manier, is the same as multiplying by what? Dividing by 0.5 is the same as multiplying by what? So what's 120 in your head times 2 in your head? This is a 240 ohm resistor, symbol for ohm. Is that there? Manier, what does C want me to use? Efficiency. Efficiency is going to be power out divided by power in. Now, they told me the power in. How many watts is this bulb rated as? 60. What's the power out? Well, power is work over time, energy per second. How many joules of energy are we getting out? 58. Read me that whole sentence. It produces. Keep reading. Every what? Every what? Oh, so I guess it's actually if the amount of time they didn't give it to me as a number, it's one second. So in your head, please, Manir, without a calculator, what is 58 divided by one? Oh. Mr. Dilek, oh, what do you get? How efficient is this bulb? But by, by the way, I just want to point out, I didn't go 58 joules divided by 60. I did recognize I can't go joules divided by watts. I converted the joules to power by saying, how much time? Oh, each second. Okay, I just want to point that out. Uh, what do you get? What? I thought incandescent bulbs were horribly inefficient. Isn't that why we're switching? Point nine six repeating, right? Point nine six six, point nine six seven. If I round off properly, so about ninety seven percent. Well, have I done my light bulb rant with you? I can't remember. I might have done this back in the energy unit. Uh, Well-meaning politicians about three or four years ago passed legislation where they have banned incandescent bulbs. They're being phased out because they're inefficient. They're not that inefficient. They're inefficient if all you're doing is lighting up an object. But your house is also capturing that heat. Your heating bill is lower by exactly the same amount of the heat that's giving off. It's not wasted heat. Now, you might say, well, Mr. Duick, in the summer, we don't want that heat. True enough. What country do we live in? Are we fairly far north? How long are our days in the summer? Are they fairly long or not long at all? Do we, lose, do we use light bulbs in the summer more or less? A lot less. It's not like we're near the equator. So, okay. Um, you might then say, well, what about outdoors, Mr. Duick? Because that heat gets wasted. That is true, except those spirally CFC ones don't work worth a darn outdoors because they don't deal with moisture very well. LEDs are pretty good, but we're worried, we're learning. There is a chance... LEDs might have a physiological effect on us because as Sarah yawns, they might make it tougher for us to fall asleep. And then you may have noticed if they've replaced all the street lights in your neighborhood with LEDs, it feels different and weird when you're walking. I don't know. They're still doing research on that. But I did want to point out, we have to be careful how we describe incandescent bulbs. They're inefficient for lighting. But I'll ask, did any of you have the little easy-bake oven growing up that would actually cook from the 
right? From the light bulbs? Yeah. Yeah. You Free food. Great. More power to you. I wanted one growing up when I was a kid, but boys weren't allowed to have them back then. All I saw was free brownies and cookies whenever I want. I'm in. Right? Kevin, what do you want me to find? Energy. That's going to be power times time. Did I put that equation on your formula sheet? That might be worth adding to your blue sheet. How am I getting it? I'm taking the power equation, which is work over time, and I'm timesing the time over. How much power are we using? How long did it say? Uh, eight, eight hours? So 8 times 3,600. And I didn't need to use that 8 hours uh, for my 58 because it did say that 58 was 58 joules each second. That's why it was over 1. Even you could do that math, right? Here, 60 times 8 times 3,600. How many joules of energy? Uh, uh, 17, 28, three zeros. How many kilowatt hours is that? How do I convert that to kilowatt hours? Now, if you forget, Matt, of course, you'll write down what they gave you. Most of you, as soon as you write the joules, I've hopefully taught you to get it to cancel. I need joules in the next fraction on the bottom, and I'm hoping that will start the domino chain that you'll just figure it out. Since it's fresh in our mind, I know that I divide that by 3.6, scientific notation, 6. Yeah, point four eight. Yes. Mitra, what's the last thing they want me to find? Mm. Yep. Well, it's going to be point zero four eight kilowatt hours times eight cents. And by the way, notice the units. It's eight cents per kilowatt hours. Do the kilowatt hours cancel? Yes. Am I just left with dollars as a unit? Yes. And again, four pennies, even all of you could afford four pennies probably. And most of you don't have any kind of an income. Why do we switch the lights off? For the planet. Not for the money. What's your homework? One is good. Two is good. Three is good. Four. Five is okay. I'm going to pass on six. Oh, hang on. Got to do seven, cooking a hot dog, absolutely. And by the way, this is kind of how they figure out microwave oven times, approximately. So number seven is asking how long until it's cooked. Um, I think the rest of these are all review, which is tempting, but no. Uh, 